Dear students, today we are going to learn an interesting topic related to our sense organs and its use in the process of learning and remembering. For introduction of the topic, think of a situation where a teacher wants to teach a verb and its example to his or her students of class 6. What would be the best way to present this component of grammar in classroom? I am giving three ways here, though the ways to teach the above mentioned topic are not restricted to these three only. The first one, to teach directly by giving or dictating definition and examples to the whole class. Second, to show a chart or still picture consisting of people doing certain activities in order to explain the topic to the students. The next point is to let the students watch a short video clip in which people are involved in different activities in order to grasp the meaning of the concept being taught in the classroom. The first way directs a teacher to speak in the classroom where the students are supposed to listen to the teacher involving their one sense organ that is ear in the whole process of learning whereas second and third ways denote the use of visual image or clip to cover most of the senses in learning and remembering the concept which is being taught by the teacher in classroom. After a span of time, a student may forget the definition given by their teacher, but the examples given with support of images and clips will last in a student's memory for long duration. Because of the involvement of two or more senses, which can also be called as multi-sensory learning. In multi-sensory learning, students are engaged in single activity by involvement of two or more senses. According to Shams and Sades, in 2008, the human brain has evolved to develop, learn and operate optimally in multi-sensory environments. Now we will move towards another subtopic of the main topic sensory organs as basis of all knowledge every human being is bestowed by nature with five sense organs except some exceptional the sense can be defined as a system that consists of a group of sensory cell types that responds to a specific physical phenomena and that corresponds to a particular group of regions within the brain where the signals are received and interpreted. The information collected by our sense organs, including the sense of hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, and seeing, forms the basis of all our knowledge. The external environment surrounding us consists of a variety of stimuli. Among them, some can be seen while some can be heard only. There are several others that we can smell, taste and touch. All stimuli present in the surrounding environment provide us with innumerable kinds of information. We have specialized sense organs to deal with these different stimuli. Sight or vision can be defined as the organ which has the capability to focus and detect image. Vision among all sense modalities is the most highly developed in human beings. It is used in approximately 80% of our transactions with the external world. Hearing or auditory is the sense of sound perception. Auditory sensation begins when sounds enter our ear and stimulates the chief organs of hearing. Ear is the primary receptor of auditory stimuli. Taste refers to the capability to detect the taste of substances such as food, certain minerals, poisons, etc. Skin is a sensory organ from which sensation of touch is produced. The skin is indeed our most consistently active and informing organ of sense. For instance, in a dark vacuum where only minimal sight, hearing, taste, smell and muscle activity would be possible, 
the skin could still report something about the nature of the surrounding. Dry, wet, soft, hard, pressure, cold, hot, etc. The stimulus for smell sensation consists of molecules of various substances contained in the air. They enter the nasal passage where they dissolve in moist nasal tissues. This brings them in contact with receptor cells contained in olfactory epithelium. In short, it can be said that while our eyes are primarily responsible for vision, ears for hearing, nose for smell and tongue for taste, skin is responsible for the experiences of touch, warmth, cold and pain. These sense organs are also known as sensory receptors or information gathering system as they receive or gather information from a variety of sources and bring information to a storage system of our memory. Our knowledge of the world around us depends on three basic processes called sensation, attention and perception. Our sense organs provide us with first-hand information about our external or internal world. The initial experience of a stimulus or an object registered by a particular sense organ is called sensation. From our external and internal environment, we encounter so many stimuli, but only selected of them are noticed. The process through which certain stimuli are selected from a group of others is generally referred to as attention. After attention, the process by which we recognize, interpret or give meaning to the information provided by sense organs is called perception. After this, we will move towards another subtopic that is learning. Learning may be defined as any relatively permanent change in behavior or behavioral potential produced by experience. In the words of J.W. Santrock, learning can be defined as a relatively permanent influence on behavior, knowledge and thinking skills which comes about through experience. On the basis of this definition, it can be said that learning happens through experience which has permanent influence on behavior, knowledge and thinking skills of the learner. When learning is seen in the context of teaching and education, it is a natural, social and active process which becomes integrative and contextualized by teachers for effective attainment of objectives and it is based on strength model of students' abilities, interest and culture. Effect of learning depends upon the maximum and judicious use of sensory organs in the process of sensation, attention and perception. Now we will move towards another subtopic that is remembering. It refers to the subsequent re-accessing of events or information from the past which have been previously encoded and stored in the brain. According to Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary, it is an act of bringing back to our mind fact, a piece of information, etc. that you knew. And it is also said to be the act of keeping or having an image in your memory of an event, person, place, etc. from the past. Remembering is connected to memory, which is defined as the retention of information over time, which involves encoding, storage and retrieval. The whole process is called as the information processing approach. According to this approach, children develop a gradual increasing capacity for processing information, which allows them to acquire increasingly complex knowledge and skills. The processing of information in memory is shown through the following figure. For good remembering and memory to work, 
learners have to take information in store it or represent it and then retrieve it for some purpose later in that figure memory's information processing has been shown and given in the following points first encoding is the first stage by which information is recorded and registered for the first time so that it becomes usable by the memory system it is biological event beginning with perception through the senses storage is the second stage of memory which refers to the process through which information is retained and held over a period of time memory storage consists of three stages namely sensory memory short term memory and long term memory atkinson and shifrin in 1968 had given a model of memory which is known as a stage model which is represented in the following figure sensory memory holds the information from environment in its original sensory form for only an instant not much longer than the brief time a student is exposed to the visual auditory or other sensations short term memory is a limited capacity memory system in which information is retained for less than 30 seconds and can get lost if not rehearsed continuously that figure shows the same thing that attention to sensory memory makes data reached short term memory but can last only when rehearsed properly and continuously this aspect has educational implications for teachers as well as for learners it is also called as working memory children who have better working memory tend to have better reading comprehension mathematics skill and problem solving than their counterparts with less effective working memory long term memory holds enormous amounts of information for a long period of time in a relatively permanent fashion then the third stage is retrieval which refers to bringing the stored information to one's awareness in order to be used for performing various cognitive tasks such as problem solving or decision making when something is retrieved from our mental data bank we search our store of memory to find the relevant information which is similar to the working of computer system remembering depends upon the encoding storage and retrieval processes of memory if children are unable to retrieve a piece of information which is already stored or recorded in brain it is called forgetting we'll move towards another topic that is use of sensory organs in the process of learning and remembering as per the discussion and depiction in given points it can be clearly stated that the basis of all knowledge is our sense organs the first receptors of stimuli from the environment surrounding us according to j m erickson we all have been involved with sensory antenna since our first heartbeat according to him all knowledge begins with sensory experiences the sense information we have accrued through experience is the most personal and valid content of our minds the thoughts and images we store up in our heads originate in the experience made available to us through our senses referring to the idea of edgar dale and his cone of experience it can be said that everyone uses his or her sensory organs to learn and remember things events persons etc the more organs you engage in this process of learning and remembering the longer lasting image will be created in mind or memory of the learner which will affect the retention of the learner the cone of experience by edgar dale is given in the following figure
through the figure given above, it can be described that people tend to remember those things with high percentage which involve more and more involvement of sense organs. When the phrase to sense is used, it means that for getting information, all the senses are being tapped and then this results in perception. The role of senses is to inform the mind. Thus, perception will be as sharp or as dull as the quality and validity of the information the senses affirm. Jean Piaget, a Swiss cognitive psychologist, advocated the same idea and described motor sensory activity as the means by which the infants and young children learn. Thus, the process of learning and remembering is not possible without use of our sense organ, which are receptors of information. Therefore, it can be concluded that sensory organs are the basic sources of all knowledge and originator of learning and remembering. The strength of bond and association of senses with the concept taught by teachers decides its retrieval and lasting effects. So, teachers have to engage as many sense organs in learning process as possible. Nothing can be perceived without the use of senses. At last, it can be said that the senses are nurtured, expressed and vitalized by involvement in the various activities in educational settings which provide for and support rich sensory experiences. <music>